also about my bill for tonight. Got the 20 rail. Fuck you. Then why are you wasting my time? Joke's on you, I do have 20 real. I'm just not giving it to you. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. There's a very real chance that this uh, actually harms my morale. The cabin on the beach is like better in every way than our fucked up hostel room. Now, granted, it's only a fucked up hostel room because I fucked it up. But I digress. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. That's the nerves. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. <gasps> That's a red check. Oh shit, that's real. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Oh, fuck yes. Okay. That, all right. That. That's the look. It's only racist because I'm wearing it. I mean, similarly, this would also be a problem. You put on that hat, and then like, then we're at like Justin Trudeau levels. I'm picking the robe because it makes my ass look amazing. Also, I've generally been like trying to not do this, but I am safe scumming the fuck out of this. We're getting this. Sometimes the content is too important. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. <laughs> uh, mm. Sorry about that. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Let's look around the room. It's still early here. Faint daylight is seeping into the dining hall. All the tables have been wiped pristine clean for the customers to come. Someone's making coffee in the kitchen, but aside from that, no one's really around yet. It would be a much better idea to perform in the evening, no? Oh, it would, wouldn't it? Yes, you could always do it in the evening. It will be less scary with a lot of people. That's literally not true at all.
we dress code. Let's test the microphone. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? Does someone feel like throwing up? I do. A little. Shit. Look, Kim, I'm doing it. I can see that. I'm not doing it. It is not yet the right time. Oh, God, take this off of me. He's right. It makes more sense to do it in the evening. The time hath not yet arrived. That's a good point. If we're safe coming in anyway, let's let's do it right. Jesus, the clothes. That's right. I, I switched out of them and then reloaded my save. Thank you. That would have been embarrassing. Okay, literally what, though? Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? What do I see in his eyes? In his eyes? Oh shit! An our familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest. Down the street that goes beyond the horizon. The road continues for miles flowing together with other roads, turning into causeways or bridges, ending suddenly in dead ends, or ramping up or down highways. It forms a crisscross pattern across the land. Where does it lead? Above the Jamrock Quarter, in the form of a raised motorway, and then the never-ending sprawl of Forberg, high above buildings, new and old, the air filled with the rumble of motor engines. Further. To the old, old self, to the farthest outskirts of Revachon, through the checkered fields of farmland, upstream to the river Esperance, past Mont Martin, the border approaches. The old, old south is where they're working on a new and improved version of racism. That's where they, that's where they start passing legislation where, you know what? That was gonna get too dark. What's beyond the border? You cannot see. It's out of the city. Up ahead, the mist blocks all sight. A gale blows across your cheeks. It is cold. Before you stands a tall lorry driver with sad The eyes. only reason it was going to get too dark is because I started thinking about a joke to make and then I realized that there was like a possibility that it would be like, that it would be a real thing that would happen. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. And then I just like pushed it out. Excuse me. What's? Oh, I said that out loud. What's in the Southwest? A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. I get longing. I felt something similar since I woke up. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. 
There's no helping in absence, you know. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Was the Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurenti, off mainland. We've got a little place there. I can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? No, it's scarier than I that. miss my gun! You're pursued by a hunter smelling of apricots and sorrow and the past <laughs> I missed my gun I lost it I'm fine man I don't miss anyone now I feel hunted hunted by what by a shadowy figure known only to me as the ex something an ex-wife oh that physically hurt me. That was not emotional damage. That was physical damage. The pain burns in your chest, radiating. A crown of altar is on fire. It's a sinister presence that hunts me across all planes of existence. Sinister presence? Wow, that sounds really bad. I hope that doesn't happen to my marriage. All right. I'm gonna ask you to define marriage but before I do, I want to just point out real quick to, like, you know, frame your answer appropriately. Man, who even knows? It's like a legal contract, but also a bond between spirits. Everyone is different. That's all I can say. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I like that answer. Don't worry, nothing bad's gonna happen to your marriage, probably. Probably not as bad as my thing, whatever my thing was. Yeah. In marriage, you never know if you're doing the right thing. I hope we're doing our best to keep ours together, but anything can happen. Look, man, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. I know it wasn't easy to ask, so I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Yo, this guy is so nice. What? Wait, no, where'd the music go? No, what the flare of the lot? I thought I had time. It just happened and then it was gone. All right, let's go. We're getting conceptual as fuck in here. Still here. Stuck in this damn jam, my man. Let's go. What's up? No, just no. I can already see it's failed, and I'm stopping it now. Until you have good poetry, you have no poetry. That's probably fair. Okay, I'm putting my armor back on. You know, there's probably, 
I bet you there's probably a mod for this that just gives you a button to optimize equipment for, um... Optimize equipment for each stat. So you don't have to, like, sift through everything each time. I know the boombox is silly and fun and ridiculous, but if I don't have the terror bag, I can't see terror. Yeah, this is uh, not happening. This has proven difficult. Nothing on that. Who the fuck else can we ask about the... I haven't talked to Everard in a while. Oh yeah, we should do this. That's what we should do. I guess while we're there, we can talk to Cindy too. again. There's a spectral scent haunting this pair, no doubt. And it smells like... Is Cindy a communist? See Brian mostly, because it's a pair. Perception is really trying to steer us out of this. Years of turmoil, of hopes and dreams, ground beneath the inexorable tides of capital. It might be Joyce! Deep breath. What do you smell? The first thing that strikes you is the overwhelming brine. You imagine yourself underwater. A hundred-legged arthropod scuttling along the murky silt at the bottom of the sea. But then the unmistakable reek of seagull shit hits you. Buoyed along on the air currents. An acrid melody atop moldering cords of wood rot and heavy fuel oil. Still smelling for communists, detective? What makes you say that? No offense, detective, but you're not particularly subtle. None taken! The lieutenant's right. It's sort of amazing how unsubtly you're sniffing the air around you. Almost like you're trying to call attention to yourself. How bad did we... That's pretty bad. What the lieutenant thinks is irrelevant. Your politico-olfactory cortex is lighting up like a holiday display. The scent of communism is overwhelming and it's coming right from that balcony over there. Joyce did identify herself in a previous conversation as an ultra liberal. Zertenemo, a precocious communist youth, a symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. I have only good feelings about this. I expect it to go well. Rhetoric's getting nothing from the room with the bust of Krasmazov in it, huh? Okay. This is the wrong balcony. Sup? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Hey, these, uh, piss and fuck send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but 
but their hearts are in the right place. Skulls are cool. Can I be a skull? Fat chance. But you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. All right, how's that? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. That doesn't answer my question. This place is a sepulchre. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. Do you know what happened to the hangman's armor? What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? But armor is art for the body. Ugh. Oh, all right, piggy. I can't believe that I'll worked. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Could that girl have been little Lily? It's not a bad place to start. I know that uh, a girl. Could have been her, small kid with giant white armored hands. If you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. Hey sister, let's talk politics for a minute. And what do you know about politics? I'm looking for comrades to help me fire up the great Mazovian sausage grinder. Will you help me? The girl erupts in a cackle that seems like it should belong to a much older woman. Oh, that's very nice. The little piggy wants to make sausages. Out of what? His little piggy friends? No. Out of the bourgeoisie. So, the little piggy is a big bad communist now. I've been this way for a couple of days at least. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk the ideological stuff. You're looking for Stiban. Who the fuck is that? A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. Does he have a jacket like this one? He might. Will you help me find him? No. Shit. The lieutenant let slip a sigh that seems to suggest this turn was utterly predictable. Guess I should just give up then. Nothing ever works out for me! Oh, God. If he isn't the saddest pig in the world. Oh, fine. I'll help. But first, I want something from you. She's got you by the balls, Chief. And she intends to squeeze them. What do you want? A wicked grin extends across her face. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. This is no way to treat your revolutionary brother. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. I'll do it, I don't give a shit. There, that wasn't so bad, was it? The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Stavan. It's touching, sort of. Stavan's group meets only at night in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. That is lucky. Hook your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. What else can you tell me? Just that he's a real communist. Not like the play acting you've been doing. The rest, you'll have to see for yourself. I feel like there's a catch. Oh, smart pig. Because there is. See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret pass phrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <clears throat> Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Manana mentioned overhearing. That's really dumb. You should feel embarrassed even suggesting that. 
Good thinking. I don't know what he's talking about. The lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. That's enough. Off with you then. All right, bye. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember something. We were definitely supposed to be remembering something. Chain cutters? Boy, I don't remember what that phrase was. Remember something and something else. You hear someone walking around. Uh... <laughs> this is, yeah. Definitely an encyclopedia fail. A weathered brown door. The number reads 20. I think we were looking for 30, but I'll try this. Something smells good. Soup along yo. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. Yeah, that sounds right. And I'm glad you brought it back up because I would never have remembered those. What should we expect? You're right. It's still this true. You hear some light footsteps and what appears to be a daily weather forecast playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. Oh, okay, this is what we need to confirm for. these, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Do you have any advice? Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Hey, what if I don't know want to do this? Yes, it's hard. But there is no easy way to handle this information. It just has to happen as soon as possible. All right, let's do it. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Hello? Who is it? And someone turns down the radio. Is this Billy Michon's home? This is the police. Please open the door. The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. Oh, God! Oh, my God! I recognize that voice! That was the lady reading books! The one we asked about her husband being missing, and she was like, my husband is not missing. Why are you, why are you saying this? And then it turns out he's actually dead from a freak accident. Oh God, her kid's missing too? Tidy enough, nervously. Come in, the door is open. Oh no. Be respectful, take it slow. Nice that she let me look at everything in the in the room. Oh, this is gonna suck. 
<sighs> it's you from the book stand. Oh my god, it Did is you her! to bring my cockatoo back? Ah, oh, fuck! For no reason, just to be a fucking weirdo cop, we hassled her about, like, finding her missing husband, and she was like, my husband's not missing. He... He's at work. He just went to work this morning. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. This is not about the cockatoo. She just nods. Keep it together. Your body language shouldn't give it away. Sorry, I'm rambling. It's just that Victor often gets into all kinds of trouble. So, how can I help you? It's like ripping off a bandage. The least painful way is to do it straight away, without stalling. a red check I don't want to but we have to I don't want to do this force yourself Slap yourself. Just, just say it! Say what? Officer. Too late, you ruined it. Just say it now. Fuck me! Excuse me, what? What did you say? She's in pain. She's in so much pain, and so are you. Your chest is burning. Thanks, Snake Eyes. Appreciate that. You sense that the lieutenant is ready to say something. Don't let him. Fix this yourself. You did this. I, yeah, let me, let me cook. The lieutenant closes his mouth, but he doesn't look pleased. Just tell me what happened to Victor. He has expired. Expired? Like a milk carton. No, he's dead. Oh. Just dead. Yes, I... It's go. It's getting worse. It's getting worse with every passing line. I'm sorry, I just need a... I don't know what to say. Probably, probably don't say anymore. I guess what I want to know is, how did he die? He fell and smashed his head against the bench. And you just found him there? Lying in the cold. Hi, Raiders! You've come at a wonderful time. We're telling this woman her husband is dead. We're not doing a good job. If you're familiar with Disco Elysium, welcome. If you're not familiar with Disco Elysium, I'm sorry. How long had he been there? For a few days. She doesn't reply. Her eyes well up with tears as she struggles to keep it together. You hear the clock ticking in the children's room. Hmm, that's a that's that's a good detail. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. It burns like acid. God, 
Should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? Smack your lips? I... I don't even know what that means in this context. Where are they? Uh, look away. All right. I'll call them. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. This place is so run down, it's kind of hard for me to even... It's kind of hard for me to even, like, believe that there is an, an education system in place. Anyway, hi, welcome, welcome, Raiders. Uh, this is a, this is quite the moment to join during, but if you're not familiar, I'm Time Wander. I play whatever weird stuff I feel like at the moment. Which reminds me, I bought Advance Wars yesterday. The new Switch remake. Should I stream that or should I just play that by myself? I've been playing stuff a lot by myself lately and it's been nice because I've been able to actually get through things and not have to like only play things three or four hours at a, at a time on stream. I've never played Advance Wars. It's part of the reason I was so excited about the uh, about the remaster because I'd heard a lot of good things about it, but never actually touched them. But it's one of those things where, like, the only thing that I know about Advance Wars is that everyone says they like Advance Wars. Now, that being said, I feel like when I ask questions like that, people answer in the sense of, like, oh, yes, that would be an option for a thing that I would enjoy watching. But, like... If not that, there's going to be other things that I'm going to play instead that will presumably also be of some some interest. I've actually got a couple of indie games on the on the docket that I want to uh, that I want to take a look at. So what I mean to say is like does anyone feel really really strongly about me specifically streaming Advance Wars. That's kind of how I feel too, and I'm I'm particularly um, I'm particularly hesitant. I said I guess to uh, start something that's long. He says 30 hours into Disco Elysium. You know what I really want to do is pop triangle strategy back in and uh, and see what that new chapter is about. Honestly, that I am going to do. She can't take much more. Her stomach is churning. Soon she will have to go to the bathroom and scream. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? He's probably in the morgue by now. We called in the thing. We, they're, they're, they're... That's... We'll just say that. And who should I contact? He was taken to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. Oh, thank God, Kim, thank you. I did not have that information ready. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still a bit... All right, that's it then. Again, if there's anything we could do for you, then don't hesitate to call the RCM, ma'am. She just nods, distant and inconsolable. The bed springs rattle beneath her as she begins to shake. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon to a scream. I'll take it from here. Thank you. We should step outside and talk.
I think that went well. So, the death notification. I know, I fucked up. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. What about the kids? There's not much we can do for them anymore, I'm afraid. That's it? That's it. We should get back to our case. There's nothing more we can do here. Well, let's get back to it then. And, officer, I've seen worse. This wasn't the worst I've seen, okay? Now let's go. That is actually weirdly comforting. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Like, option one where it's like, I'm sorry I didn't do this better. It's like, yeah, she doesn't care. Like, don't make it about you. Could not be less the time for that. Dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito, bullet holes, and an RCM sticker. Okay, listen. Love that mail delivery box. However, our priorities have shifted. Fuck you, mail delivery box. There is a hollow ring as you kick the box. It sounds like it's mostly empty. Your toe hurts now. Yeah, that's the shit. Cool. You really showed that mail collection box. You think so? You think it was cool? I don't. Let's go. Well, you know what? It worked out really well for me, actually. How the fuck do I get up to the roof of this building? The door is closed. I don't think... Really? The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Technically, I haven't, since I didn't actually pay to be in here right now. I didn't see that before. There he goes. Clean up the hotel room, make some money. Does that door go anything anywhere interesting? Uh, to the bathroom, I think. I don't believe it goes anywhere else. Oh, this door. I believe that connects to the other- Kim also tries not to look at the pile of take viscera on the carpet or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. Listen, I've had a time of it, okay? The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape and not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor. Where unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. I haven't vomited in here in like five days. This is where the magic happens. And by that you mean crimes against humanity? 
I defied bourgeoisie morality in here. I have no idea what that means. Neither do I. But at least I'm cleaning up after my bottles. The window stands broken. In well, this was productive. God, that's terrible weather. Literally, is it the blue door? Maybe it's the blue door. It's not the blue door right now. Uh, my other guess would be the doomed commercial area, but honestly, I think I'm good with not knowing tonight. I think soon I will want a nudge in the right direction. But for tonight, I think I'm done. That feels like a good stopping point. A botched death notification. And Kim looking at the trashed hostel room that I haven't slept in in two days. Can't imagine how it could have gone any better than that. They just never let you... They never let it just, like, be bad. You have to linger in it for a while, right? Like, the initial blurting out, like, your husband's dead! That's bad. But then it... Then it compounds. And it gets worse. Definitely karaoke next time. <laughs> 